Welcome back to Vanies Aquatics. Thank you, everybody. I'm glad you're here today. We're going to do something a little different. We're going to talk about sea monsters. No, not make-believe sea monsters, but actual documented cases of real sea monsters. Now, probably sure you've all heard about the Bigfoot or the Sasquatch, the Abominable Snowman, uh, the Wolfman or the Dogman, what are known as cryptids. Well, I have some deep sea cryptids that might actually be real or have existed at one time. So, let's see what we got. The first story I found. Wait till you hear this one. Jesus. This was a, uh, this happened off the coast of Honolulu, Hawaii on September 20th, 1905. According to a news report in the San Francisco Call, volume 98, number 119, a Japanese fisherman, he was in for a surprise. We caught what went on to be called the frogfish. Now, this isn't like the frogfish you get out for your saltwater aquariums. This creature, the one in question, was described as having gills and fins, just as a fish would have. But get this, also possessing four well-developed legs and feet, complete with toenails. <laughs> now, who's going to cut this thing's toenails? But besides that, according to the report, the bizarre creature was put on display at the aquarium in Waikiki, but that no one who viewed it has been able to identify as it belonging to any recognized family of fishes. What could this fish possibly have been, and what happened to the specimen that was supposedly on display at the aquarium? Good question, and of course the answer is no one really seems to know. But there's a follow-up on this one. something stranger he turned up it was may 22nd uh 1912 the same newspaper according to the report a fisherman named steve Gio was fishing in southern california off the coast of san diego when he pulled up a net of what it must look like a beast from another planet this deeply bizarre fish was said to be two feet long supposedly had eight legs and purportedly Get this, barked like a dog. The creature was put into an improvised tank. Yeah, we all know about that. And uh, it was put in an improvised tank. And it was brought to San Diego, where it was reportedly led around the wharf by a rope tied around its neck, just like a dog might be, as hundreds of curious onlookers gawked at the unusual sight. The original news report would say the creature. Get this one. The strange, unclassified feature has teeth like a canine and gills and dorsal fins, as well as scales like a fish. It's two feet in length and slender. The feet are without nails and covered with a soft fur. It will not eat meat, but this afternoon, eagerly devoured raw potatoes whole and seemed fond of seaweed. It ate out of Gio's hand, but could not remain out of water long. Now, the whole surreal story ends proclaiming that the fish was going to be examined by a Dr. Ritter of the biological station in La Jolla, and that it would be put on display if it would survive its, or if it would survive its ordeal, of course. <laughs> but then, there was no further word on what happened to it, or what it was, or at least that anyone's been able to locate. This is another frustrating case of an obviously new species. Well, I don't know about obviously. In this case, something seemingly quite like any other fish out there with an actual physical specimen in hand that just sort of faded away into obscurity, lost to the tides of history. One wonders what in the world kind of barking furry-footed sea creature to had walking along like a dog on a leash on eight legs, eating whole potatoes out of people's hands. And what became of it? I mean, where did it go? Please, hit the like button. If you're new, subscribe and smash that notification bell. Thank you. Oh, you think that's something? Wait for this one. Another monster of the deep allegedly captured on December 6th 
1919, when several newspapers reported on a massive fish of some sort found by a city official of Venice, California, now Venice, Italy, named Frank Benedict, described as being composed of mostly mouth, head, and tail, the creature was said to be nine feet in length with four rows of jagged teeth set within huge jaws and the eyes the size of dinner plates. Jesus. All in all, the creature was described as looking like an enormous tadpole. What was it? Where did it go? Where did his body go? Why did anyone do a more thorough examination? No one knows. But several newspapers reported on it. To top that, an even larger fish, this massive freakish fish, was allegedly caught in 1923 by a Captain Charles H. Thump off the coast of Katanang, hope I said that right, Western Australia. If the July 18, 1923 report from the Great Southern Herald is to be believed, then this was a creature that was friggin' huge, gigantic proportions, measuring 45 feet long with 8 feet wide and a 3 foot dorsal fin. This thing, they estimated it weighed approximately 15 tons. It was said to be unlike a whale and described as a fish with gills and spots on his head, which sported a formidable mouth filled with thousands of sharp teeth. Now, you think that's the way they continue. When this monster was opened and his stomach examined... That should be reasonable, huh? This is not the time or the place to perform some kind of a half-assed autopsy on a fish. And I am not going to stand here and see that thing cut open and see that little Kettner boy spill out all over the dock. It was reportedly found to recently devoured a 400-pound octopus, a 1,500-pound blackfish, and oddly, 500 pounds of coral. Maybe for fiber? I'm not sure. Based on its apparently very small eyes and three-inch thick hide, it was speculated that the creature lived in the deep, dark sea and been brought up to the surface by some sort of undersea upheaval, such as a volcanic eruption as if this isn't all completely weird enough, another article claims that the scientist says they looked at it and they determined it's not even fully grown yet, saying, although this fish is the largest ever captured, American naturalists claim that it's only a baby of its kind and that had it lived, because we had to kill it, it would have become at least twice this size. And again, what happened to the body? What was this humongous beast? Where did it come from? Shirley was such a fantastic find. Don't call me Shirley. Must be more to this story. However, it all remains a mystery yet again. One last one. In 1930, there was another strange specimen caught by fisherman Harry Smith in Redondo Beach, California. Now, according to the Madeira Tribune, number 120, 14th of March, 1930, the creature, quote, the creature is unlike anything known and is believed to have come from a deep cavern below the cliffs. It was described as being five foot long with a stout, squat body, a five foot long tail making it a full ten foot in length, and a formidably wide mouth full of sharp fangs, with which it snapped viciously at curiosity seekers who ventured too close to the net it was being kept in. So that's how people are. They just, they see something in the net or a monkey in a cage and they just want to go touch it. Leave these things alone, people, okay? Obviously, it doesn't want to deal with you right now. Now, by all accounts, it was extremely aggressive. And get this, it was able to survive out of water for surprisingly long periods of time. In 1945, this same newspaper reported that four fishermen from Lynn, Massachusetts had brought in a 20-foot long sea beast that looked like an eel with a balloon head, which they had claimed had dragged their boat for over a mile out to sea before they subdued it. In both of these cases, the fate of these potentially important species remains unknown. Now look, it might be easy to dismiss these as little pieces of fluff 
or sensationalist news on a slow news day. And skeptics are going to probably point out that newspaper error, you know, back then they weren't above exaggerating stories. But this really happens in real life, okay? I'm going to prove it to you right now. Take this article from the November 19, 1976 edition of the Desert Sun. 1976, you obviously been alive when they did this. This was in the Desert Sun, and the article reads, Scientists today eagerly elated the shipment of a mysterious 12-foot shark with a mouth that apparently glows in the dark. Yep. Navy crewmen hauled up the creature from 3,000 feet below the surface near Hawaii after it became entangled in some testing gear. The dead shark was given to the Waikiki Aquarium, there we go again, for eventual shipment to San Francisco's Steinhardt Aquarium. Leighton Taylor, director of the Waikiki Aquarium, told Steinhardt director John McCosker this shark species in the genus is unknown to scientists. I don't know, that sounds pretty crazy, doesn't it? I mean, really, a 12-foot shark with a glowing mouth lurking 3,000 feet below in the cold abyss. They got hauled up by an AB ship in the middle of nowhere doing who knows what. I mean, it kind of sounds like a uh, James Cameron movie, you know, or Deep Blue Sea or something like that. But the article is actually true and it's referring to the discovery of the Mega Mouse Shark. The very first known specimen image was caught in November 15, 1976 of Kaneohe, Hawaii by the United States naval ship AFB-14 with its outsized mouth blob-like flaccid body and rubbery lips, the mega mouth is quite a strange sight indeed. And it even has a glowing mouth in the form of a luminous photophores lining its gaping maw for the purpose of luring in small fish and plankton. Indeed, if anything, the article is actually downplaying the discovery, as the reality is that the first mega mouth caught in 1976 was close to a full 15 feet long. The capture of the Mega Mouse Shark was one of the most excitingly large animal discoveries of the 20th century. And it shows that not all the newspaper articles are full of crap and merely sensationalizing. It's proved that there are things in our ocean we just don't understand. Now these newspaper archives, if you go back and look, especially the older ones, they're chock full of stories like this. Now were they all made up? Or are those just things that maybe aren't around anymore or they've learned how to hide from us us silly humans that like to uh, you know like to kill them I don't know what do you think let me know in a comment down below but I hope you found those stories pretty interesting I mean some of it does sound pretty outrageous but then again these were all in newspapers they were all reported my personal opinion is we don't know it's in the ocean there's probably some really cool stuff down there it's just like I don't want to hang out with these dudes because they're going to kill us. Other than that, I don't know. I think our oceans are going to be full of surprises. And we really only scratch the surface of what lies out there. In the depths of our seas, some of the highest rates of new species discovered. And with many every bit as bizarre and wondrous as any beast you'll see in a science fiction movie or in a book. The further we go into the murky depths as our technology improves, the more of these weird, strange creatures we're going to find. We might even find some real sea monsters. Thank you, Dynamy. I hope you had a good time checking this out. I hope it piqued your curiosity about what is in our deep seas. Wouldn't it be nice to have a sea monster in your fish room? I think so, too. So, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Um, check out my merch at Teespring. And uh, make sure you come back next time. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, I don't know what's wrong with you. Hit the subscribe button. Thank you. I'll see Woo! you next time on Vinny's Aquatic.